Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the brand new Beautylish Yano series brushes. These are the new eye brushes that Beautylish just came out with, and there are five brushes to this set. I have been playing around with them so I can give you um, a pretty decent review. I got them, I got them sent to me, first of all. So Beautylish did send these to me in PR. Uh, I want to say I got these, I'm really losing track of time couple weeks ago. Anyway, I've been using them uh, when I can in my makeup routine just so I can give you guys some uh, feedback. So I'm going to go over each brush. Uh, we'll talk about like the price and the fiber composition and um, how I like to use them. So these brushes are numbered 6 through 10. So it's kind of this continuation of their face brush set. And their face brush set is available as a set. This eye brush set is available as a set. This is available for $180. And then each individual brush brush is available on its own as well. And I just saw on the Beautylish site that now you can get all 10 of the brushes. So both the face and the eye brush set is available as one. But today we're going to be focusing on the eye set. So let's start with brush number six. And this is the large tapered eyeshadow brush. And this is comprised of gray squirrel hair. So it is very, very soft. And for an eye brush, I would say that this hair length is fairly long and it is fairly unique. I don't see a lot of eye brushes that are shaped like this as sort of like candle flame shape. Um, I do, again, I do have a couple like this, um, which we'll do comparisons at the end. But I found that this uh, type of brush, at least for me, took a little bit of getting used to because again, it is very, very different from uh, most brushes that we see on the market. Because it has a point there, it's not the type of brush that I like to use as a blending brush like this. Um, and again, this is just my experience and I'm just sharing with you how I like to use the brushes or whatever. There's no right or wrong. If you get this brush and you like to use it a different way, amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna share with you how I like to use them. So again, because there's a point for me, I'm not the biggest fan of using it kind of um, head on the way you would kind of like a, a typical blending brush. I like to use it uh, this way, kind of on its side. And because it has such a long angle here, you get a lot of um, like hair tips this way when you kind of lay it on its side. So knowing I'm gonna use it flat, that's how I like to load up the brush. I'm not going to dip it into my pan this way. I'm gonna dip it in sideways. All right, so I have a bunch of different um, like eyeshadow formulas here in front of me. And um, before we go on, I do just want to mention that because gray squirrel hair is used in all of these brushes, I do not recommend using these with any sort of liquid products. Um, if you get liquid products onto um, hairs that are a little bit more delicate, you have the chance of actually breaking the hairs, which you don't want to do. So you want to be gentle with these and you definitely want to use these with powder products. So because this is a large brush, I'm going to use this to lay color down kind of all over my lid. And I've got my Charlotte Tilbury um, Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter in Star Aura. This is like a baked gelée formula. And typically, I don't really like um, using very, very soft hairs, which this is, with a baked gelé formula. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate it with you. So I'm gonna brush this over this shade right here. This is actually the, <laughs> the bottom right-hand shade. And again, I'm just going to pick up some product. Again, I'm just sort of laying the brush on its side and picks up product really nicely. And I'm just gonna demonstrate how beautifully this picks up and lays down product. And I was just saying how I'm not the biggest fan of using like softer hairs uh, for these kind of baked gelé products because they are a little bit more difficult to pick up. But this brush does such a wonderful job. Look at how beautiful that is. It also makes very, very quick work of just laying color down all over. So that's brush number six using um, a baked gelé and I uh, chose this formula specifically again because typically I would not use a soft hair in baked gelé, but I did wanna give it a shot. And when I did, when I was testing it, I was like really, really impressed at how easily it picked up the product and how beautifully it laid it down. So I did just wanna show you guys that. All right, next we have brush number six and this is the tapered eyeshadow brush. So this one is smaller then brush number six. So here we have six over here and brush number seven over here. 
So since this brush number seven is a little bit smaller than the larger one that we just used, this is really, really great if you want to add um, like a little bit of color, obviously in a more concentrated way, but you want it uh, because of this type of brush, if you want it in kind of like a, a smokier kind of way. So again, I'm gonna go back into this Charlotte Tilbury, um, this Baked Jelly formula, and I'm gonna go into the deeper shade. And again, I'm gonna pick up some of the product. And I was just really impressed at how easily these soft, soft, soft brushes, I mean, these brushes are so minky, minky, soft and fine to the touch. I was so impressed at how beautifully they picked up this type of formula. So picked up some of the deeper brown and I'm just going to lay it down along my lashes. And this gives me just a really beautiful, very diffused kind of application. So again, it's great if you want something like already kind of smudged out, a little bit smoky feeling, a little bit smoky looking, it is great for that. And again, that was just so, so fast. And it just takes a few brush strokes and you're done. Just really, really loving these brushes. So brush number six and brush number seven, these are sort of those candle flame shaped brushes. Um, let's move on to brush number eight. And this brush is their blending brush. And this is the one brush in the series that actually is a mix of gray squirrel and goat hair. So this has a little bit more density to it. Goat hair is just the teensiest bit more firm than squirrel hair. So I think that is a great call on Beautylicious part to create a blending brush that has just a little bit more of a of a fiber that will help kind of like move product instead of just lay it down. So this kind of brush uh, works beautifully with these like baked gelée formulas, really no surprise there. So I'm not gonna demo that. I'm gonna jump to a different formula. So I pulled out my Natasha Denona Camel Palette and the Natasha Denona shadows are, they're like a little bit thicker. They're a little bit more uh, dense to me. And so I like to use a brush like this one that's gonna be able to kind of move the product and actually blend it out. So I'm going to go into this shade right at the end here, it's a matte shade. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit with this blending brush. And with this brush, I do like to use kind of the, the tips of it. I like to use it more in like a perpendicular fashion to my face. So I'm just going to pick up a little product, knock a little bit off, and I'm going to use it in a buffing way. So I'm just using like circular motions. And what I'm doing is I'm really utilizing the tips of the bristles because that's really where you're gonna get a lot of the blending action, if you will. And because this brush is round in shape and it's got that really nice dome shape at the top, it really lends itself to this kind of uh, small circular buffing motion. So just picking up a little bit more and just continuing on with these circular motions. Now, of course, if you wanna bring the shadow kind of like into your crease area, my socket line back and forth works beautifully as well. You can see it's bringing the shadow in really nicely, really, really blending it out smoothly. So there, there's the Natasha Denona matte shadow applied. And that's how I like to use this number eight brush, predominantly in like a circular uh, motion fashion. It's kind of like a buffing fashion. But when I do wanna drag it over, I do like to use like windshield wiper motions. But when it comes to um, brushes with like really, really uh, soft hairs, again, I really don't like to put too much pressure down onto the brush. I really just like to focus my tips, kind of just let the hairs do their thing. So I just kind of like to graze just the tips of the brushes, not a lot of pressure over the product. So that is brush number eight, that's the blending brush. Let's move on to brush number nine. And brush number nine is a flat blending brush. So it does have a pinched ferrule and what I noticed, or at least the first thing I noticed when I looked at this brush is for a flatter type of brush, brushes that I generally refer to as shader brushes, this has like a longer hair length. And let me just uh, hold up one as a comparison. Here's my refer number two flat shader, which is also wider, but look at how short that hair length is. And here's my Chikahoto GSN 9 brush. 
probably a little bit closer in width, still a little bit wider. To, and again, like more of a typical shader versus this one, which you can see is sort of this hybrid between a shader and a blender. Um, but you can see how much shorter the hair length is. So this brush is very, very unique to my collection. I do have quite a few brushes. And when you have um, hair lengths that are longer, there's gonna be a lot more movement um, of the actual bristles. So with this brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Dior uh, Quint. This is in soft cashmere. <laughs> and I'm gonna go into this metallic shade in the upper left-hand corner. And so with a typical flat shader, I tend to expect a lot of product to get laid down. You know, you use flat shaders for really metallic shades. Um, you'll use it for like cream shadows. If you just want like a one swipe, you know, kind of like heavy lay down of product, that's kind of what I expect from a flat shader. This is, again, because it's kind of this hybrid between shader and blender, it lays down product beautifully, but in a much lighter way. So here is that metallic shade. And, you know, something I noticed with all all of these brushes is even though they're very, very soft and you do get a, like kind of a lighter application than a typical more like dense kind of eyeshadow brush, um, it just makes really, really quick work of laying down product. I never feel like I'm kind of going back and forth and back and forth between my eye and um, the product, you know, just kind of going back and forth like I never picked up enough product. These pick up an extraordinary amount of product. It's actually amazing. But the lay down is so, so soft and it's like immediately blended. Like as soon as you put it down, it's like blended out. So that is the Dior Soft Cashmere Metallic Shade. And if I had to choose a brush, you know, to kind of like blend things out just to kind of soften up edges, which I don't even think you need to do when you use brushes like this because the lay down is so soft, I would always go back to the number eight brush. This is the typical blending brush with that dome top. And I would just kind of drag that along. So the eight brush is the one I would go and kind of like soften up edges if I needed to. And then last but not least, we have the liner brush. So this liner brush is incredible because you know, when I line my eyes, if I use a brush that is a little bit on the rougher side, which I do feel like a lot of liner brushes are, you know, very stiff, um, they're very, very dense, and sometimes it just kind of irritates my eyes. You know, nothing crazy, but you know, like my eye will get a little bit irritated. And so I was really excited to try out like a squirrel hair liner brush. And for this, I'm gonna go into this Chanel Quad. This is the Claire Obscure number 308. I'm gonna go into the deepest brown shade. And I picked this formula because it is, well, it's not a baked gelée. It's also quite different from the Dior shadows. It's actually, I would say, pretty similar to the Natasha Denona. Maybe not quite as creamy, maybe a little, like a teensy, teensy bit drier, um, but these are baked shadows. But anyway, I thought I would just go ahead and demonstrate with these. So I've got the brush number 10 liner brush. I'm gonna go into that deep shade. And again, for squirrel hair, I'm so surprised at like how soft the hairs are, but how much product they pick up. The hairs are so soft, you almost like don't even feel it when you're brushing it onto your lid. But I drew that entire line without having to dip back into the pan. So all of these brushes, they just pick up a lot of product and then it lays it down so softly. I mean, that's sort of the magic when it comes to natural hairs, but these Beautylish brushes really do like a fantastic job of it. All right, so that is the demo of all five brushes. And what I wanted to show you were just some um, comparisons of some of these brushes. So like I had mentioned, brushes six and seven, these tapered eyeshadow brushes, these are you know fairly unique, I think, in shape. But the large tapered eyeshadow brush is very, very similar to Wayne Goss's um, The Artist Collection Small Brush. So this is a great brush, actually, if you do want to lay down like kind of a, just a one shadow look, I think it's great. It makes very, very quick work of it, um, but it's also great for highlight. If you just want to use it to kind of like highlight your cheeks, highlight up and down your nose, 
um, you know, above your brows or wherever, down your chin. This is a great like highlighting brush. So I did want to point that out that these two are very, very similar. And then the closest brush I have to um, brush number seven, the regular tapered eyeshadow brush is this small smoky eye brush from Surratt. Now Surratt also does have a medium and a large and the large I would think is probably very similar to the large tapered eyeshadow brush. Um, but this is the small one. It's a little bit smaller than the 07, but they have, um, they're both made out of squirrel hair. So they are very, very similar. And then as for the blending brush, the brush number eight, this is probably the most uh, traditionally shaped, um, well, maybe the brush number 10 as well, but this is uh, like a pretty traditionally shaped blending brush. So I did just want to hold it up to Sonia G's Blender Pro Brush. And um, I feel like the ferrule uh, diameter is about the same. I feel like the hair lengths are about the same. The shape is different. The shape of this blending brush is a little bit more domed and Sonia G's is a little bit more pointed. So I think that's just preference. And all of these brushes are handmade in Japan. So they may vary like a little bit. And I have noticed like some batches will be a little bit more pointed. Some batches will be a little bit more domed. Um, but these are very, very similar, very close, except for the hair type. So this is goat hair. And again, this one is a blend between gray squirrel and goat. Like I mentioned for brush nine, I really don't have anything um, similar to this. I don't have any brush that's as narrow and long. So this one is a very new and unique brush to my collection, which is great. And then the liner brush is fairly unique because it is squirrel hair and it's difficult to find a liner brush that is made out of squirrel hair. The very first pencil one brush that Sonia G came out with was squirrel, but she switched over to goat. And Sonia G's is uh, shorter in length, so it's a little bit denser. This one has a little bit more movement because the hair lengths are longer. And here's Sonia G's crease one brush, which looks like a giant uh, liner brush. And you can see that it is bigger than brush number 10. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And let me know if you have any questions about these brushes down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.